One year ago, March 2022, I uploaded 10 things that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour. That video did so well. It became my most viewed video for a couple of months before my 10 mistakes video retook the crown for most viewed. However, as of the battle tour, we have entered a new era of Mario Kart Tour, and right now we are in the third Mario vs. Luigi tour as of writing out this script. However, there are still things that everybody hates in the game, and it just so happens that I have found 10 more things that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour. From expensive ruby prices to something that has been a problem since the game's launch, it's gonna be a great video. So today, with the list in no particular order, I'll be covering those 10 things in this part of the hates video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, because I sure won't hate that, do pick up some merch from my shop, and without further ado, here are 10 things that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour Part 2. Ever since entering into the new era of Mario Kart Tour, I thought it was going to start off strong. I mean, we do have battle mode out, which is a nice feature, but I'm going to rant on that later, because there's a lot of things that's wrong with battle mode. The main thing in this first point that I am talking about involves the first thing that everybody hates, expensive ruby prices. At first glance, I thought that the removal of the spotlight pipes and transform them into a spotlight shop back when the announcement was first announced was a fantastic idea. Because I had this problem of me getting trolled into thinking I have gotten a spotlight character. Like for example, in the Metropolitan Tour, I was trying to pull for Chef Rosalina and ended up getting Cat Toad and it took me 84 pulls just to get Chef Rosalina. And now with the spotlight pipes gone, I won't get trolled into thinking I have obtained a spotlight whenever I pull a pipe. However, the cost in the spotlight shop with rubies is a bit expensive. The cost for the me outfits hasn't changed being 100 rubies for a me outfit. The spotlight shop is a different story. The carts and gliders are 100 rubies, just like with the me outfits, but for the drivers, it will cost you 150 rubies. 50 more rubies than the carts and gliders. And that is honestly a pretty high number, especially with the number of free rubies that you can receive is less than before the new era started. Let me play you the clip from my changes video about how many free rubies that you can receive before the new era started. You can receive free rubies from Tour Gifts, Cart Pro, Celebrations, Standard Multiplayer and Tier Challenges, Token Shop from using tokens and or from the pipes from the Token Shop, Rank Cups, and the Today's Challenges either from Days 5 to 10 and from the pipes. Which brings this question, however. How many free rubies do non gold pass subscribers obtain each tour? Excluding Cart Pro and Celebrations as they don't show up every tour, Token Shop Pipes and Today's Challenge Pipes as there is a chance that you won't receive any rubies, Standard Multiplayer and Tier Challenges as there's no way you can complete them all in one tour, and Rank Cups as the amount you get varies your placement. You will receive a maximum of 69 rubies. 21 from Tour Gifts, 10 from the Today's Challenges, Days 5 and 10, 15 for the Token Shop, 5 for the Tour Multiplayer Challenges, and 18 for the Tour Points Challenges. And yes, I had to do multiple double checkings to make sure I got my math right. In the new era, excluding Standard, Multiplayer, either on Races or Battle, and Tier Challenges, Token Shop Pipes, Today's Challenge Pipes, Ranked, Car Pro, and Celebrations, you will still get 21 from the Tour Gifts, 5 from Multiplayer Challenges, and 15 from the Token Shop. However, you now get 6 from Tour Points Challenges, 
and zero from today's challenges as the fifth and tenth day are now replaced with pipes. That is a total of 47 rubies. That is a gigantic nerf to receiving free rubies. Now I get it that people focus more on the drivers because of the increased frenzy probability. I stated this in my first part of the hates video back when the spotlight pipes were a thing where a lot of people rather cave in rubies for top shelf cards, drivers, and gliders that they need for ranked. Such as an instance where you don't have a top shelf or ranked. Like recently me on Mushroom Gorge RT back in the me 2023. This is honestly one of the most annoying things that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour. Trust me, this happens to us all the freaking time because there's always the possibility of this happening. Especially if you are new to playing Mario Kart Tour and your inventory are not highly leveled up and you are not familiar with the game. Breaking your combo. This one hurts. The reason why this is hated is because when you break your combo, there is always that chance that you won't get a new record on tracks or battle tracks that you need to get a new record on. Whether it is for ranked or tracks in the entirety of the tour that you need to get a new record on in order for you to make the top 1000 aka the all cup ranking. And what also sucks about breaking your combo is that once you break your combo, you won't get the non-stop combo bonus points and getting non-stop combo bonus points can help you get a new record on any track in the tour, whether you're going for ACR or not. A couple of ways on how you can break your combo include hitting an item, falling off the track, or not squeezing out your mini turbo in time. Now. To be honest, there are instances where if you do break your combo, you have the urge to restart or quit your race. However, if you have seen my 10 mistakes video, if you do restart or quit your race, you don't know if you have gotten a new record or not. I mean, I have had instances where I did get a new record, but my combo ended up getting broken in the process. Some of these scenarios had to deal with item luck or had multiple frenzies in the process to help me get new records despite breaking my combo. Items include coin box and lucky seven. You would not believe how much of this I have been experiencing and it has gotten super annoying. And I am talking about lag. Now I understand lag in multiplayer, that is normal. It all determines your location and the internet connection you're experiencing. However, I am talking about lag in single player mode. In my opinion, there is honestly no reason why lag should even happen in single player mode. There are a few reasons why lag in single player mode is an issue. The first reason is the controls. When lag happens, you have the possibility of breaking your combo because you aren't controlling your vehicle and when you aren't controlling your vehicle you may encounter stuff like weird drifts that won't charge mini turbos or the game crashing. Another reason is a little bit of a follow-up with the game crashing. When you experience lag you may encounter either a communication error or an error in general and so you have no choice but to close the app and try again. And that is honestly really annoying. Especially if you have gotten a new record on a track and an error occurred and you had to try getting the new record on the same track. This next point is a point that I have mentioned from the first point. And it is not just another thing that is annoying, but yet it can be very frustrating and that is the frenzy probability. Now, I, I understand frenzies, they are one of those things that we actually enjoy in Mario Kart Tour. Hence my frenzy montage and my 10 things that everybody enjoys in Mario Kart Tour. However, 
with the frenzy probability, that is a whole different story. I have stated this point in my 10 things that are unfair in Mario Kart Tour, that there will be times that a lower level driver has more frenzies than a driver that is or close to max out. Trust me, I have dealt with this multiple times. There are two other reasons why the frenzy probability is unfair though. The second reason is because most times, frenzies, they don't appear in ranked tracks, but most importantly, on non-ranked tracks. And that kind of defeats the purpose, because frenzies need to appear more on ranked tracks in order to keep your tier up. And the third reason is honestly the worst way of experiencing bad frenzy probability. And believe me, we have all been there. And that reason is most times, and long story short, frenzies won't appear at all during a race. That reason is just really frustrating, especially if just like I stated, you are grinding for ranked or ACR. This. Do I need to say anything else? These points I'm about to mention are three points as one because their points lead into following points I'm about to mention. These next three points involves at least one thing that we hate. The first thing that we hate is at least one driver. It could be high-end, normal, or super class. This point is really quick as there isn't that much to discuss. The high-end drivers are more common drivers that we hate. The reason that we probably hate these drivers is because their outfits or the character themselves are either really bland or have a bad skill item. Some of the drivers that I qualify as bland involves reskins of previously released drivers with that skin from a previous tour, like Tanuki Mario from Autumn 2021 and then having White Tanuki Mario from Sunday and the gold characters like Gold Petey from Halloween 2022, despite having Petey Piranha from Piranha Plant earlier that same year. And characters with a bad skill item includes those with either Bubble or Tanuki Leaf, like the Cheap Cheap Me Outfit and Larry Me Outfit, and the Tanukis. And the item point that I mentioned leads into the next point that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour. As I stated in the first part of my high-end skill items explained video, there are a total of 37 items in the game, with 24 of the items belonging to a specific character. Some skill items are perfect to help you score a lot of points, like Coin Box, Boomerang, Giant Banana, and Lucky 7. Others can help you get the job done by how well you use them, like Fire Flower and Ice Flower. However, this list is not just about skill items, but the entire items list in general. We all hate at least one item in general, whether they are skill items or not. Some of the items that I think are bad are what I stated about Bubble and Tanuki Leaf, but what if I told you that the Bullet Bill is also a bad item? Uh? That is because this is an item that you mostly want to use in multiplayer but not single player mode. The reason for that is because in single player mode, the bots may not be in your path for you to hit them in order to keep up with your combo. But in multiplayer, it's just mostly helping you get first place. Cause to me, multiplayer is kind of pointless to get new records on tracks. And racing on tracks lead into the next point. There are a variety of tracks in the game, with a ton of them being classic courses, over a dozen evolving tracks in cities, and soon to be five based off of original tracks that haven't been in any Mario Kart game prior to Tour, except for Sky High Sunday, Yoshi's Island, and Squeaky Clean Sprint, which were data mined to be a Tour track because of the ID names Mob YI for Yoshi's Island, 
Mob IB for Sky High Sunday, and Mob BR for Squeaky Clean Spring. But let's face it, we all have at least one track that we despise. This can be for a couple reasons. The track doesn't play well in tour, the track is too short for it to be two laps, thus making new records to be a bust, or it is bad at grinding combos. That is basically all I have to point out about this. This next point is another one of those very quick points, and it is the most important feature that has been a problem since the game's launch, and it is pretty obvious what I am talking about. The controls. There are times where the controls in the game are completely whack. For example, if you are trying to drift, and you let out a drift, but you want to drift again, there will be times where one of two things will happen. You are trying to activate a drift, moving your finger to the side, but the drift cancels until you want to drift again, but it still doesn't come out, and you break your combo and you restart quit your race, and forcing you to try again. Or, you will end up with a poor drift, and you will drift very wide, and you will not be able to charge a mini turbo, and that too can break your combo. Another reason is the items. There will be times where you would accidentally release your items, even though your finger never touched the screen. That is basically all I have to point out about the controls. Oh boy. I have saved the best for last, and you would not believe how long I've been wanting to do this point. We have all been there, and let's just say this final point is basically roasting the living out of Nintendo. The point? Nintendo's laziness. Nintendo has gotten so lazy over time in general with not just Mario Kart Tour, but releasing games unfinished and providing free updates afterwards and it has gotten ridiculous. But I'm getting off topic. Here are some examples of laziness in Mario Kart Tour. First off, Nintendo recycles, or in this case, reskins character alts, cards, and gliders, and it just loses the inventory's taste, making it worthless for us to spend our rubies on. Secondly, Nintendo doesn't care if new characters don't correspond well with certain tracks or tours, like for example, Penguin Yellow Toe for DK Summit and Kitsune Luigi for DK Mountain, when both of those tracks could have added DK Alt, or better yet, Cranky Kong, and Pauline Rose for the Peach vs. Daisy tour. And don't get me started with the gold characters, like Gold Shuck for Bowser 2022, and I already stated Gold Petey for Halloween 2022, where both of these gold characters are the only characters introduced in those tours. The third point involves recycling tour names. The main reason why we enjoy these tours is because of the tour names, and out of a lot of tour names that Nintendo can use, they wanted the tours to be the best like no tour ever was. Unless if you are Bowser vs. DK. However, with the tour names being recycled, they can be a bit lazy. I mean, Yoshi, Halloween, and Holiday Slash Winter Tours are examples but I can understand why they can be recycled, because they are holiday-like tours, with Yoshi being around Easter, and Holiday slash Winter being around Christmas. But tours like Los Angeles, Paris, and Team Rallies have no need to be recycled. Team Rallies take the whole thing to a whole new level. As of the making of this script, we have had three instances of repeated Team Rallies, twice with Mario vs. Luigi, and once with Peach vs. Bowser, with Peach vs. Bowser being showcased twice in one year. Come on, Nintendo! There are so many other characters that you can use for team rallies, like Donkey Kong vs. Diddy Kong, Bowser vs. Bowser Jr., Luigi vs. Daisy, because they are the losers of their respective teams. Or better yet, Mario vs. Bowser. Mario vs. Bowser especially, because Bowser is the first boss in the main Super Mario games! 
It's common knowledge, Nintendo! The fourth and final point I will be discussing about Nintendo's laziness is about the battle tracks. However, the tracks themselves aren't lazy. However, it is about the battle music. Mario Kart Tour did something that Mario Kart DS did, and it was the first game to do that, which is understandable because it is one of those games where you can't add a lot of content for such a little handheld device. But when it came to Tor, and the amount of storage capacity they have, each two weeks, data miners found GCN Cookie Lands and GBA Battle Course 1's music in the files. But Nintendo did the lazy way around and used Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Battle Course 1's music for all battle tracks. The only problem is, SNES Battle Course 1 is not in Tor. Here's what the music was supposed to be for GC and Cookie Land. And here's what the battle music is in Tor. After hearing the battle music in the battle tracks, I was like, what in the Ouroboros interlink was Nintendo thinking? This made battle music very ear aching, especially whenever I play battle mode in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and this song pops up. But this is another example of Nintendo's laziness. They didn't just do that with the retro battle tracks. The city battle tracks also did this. And it's just very lazy. Let me play you a clip from New York Minute B and you will understand what I mean. What made Nintendo feel like a fool of themselves was I reported this to Nintendo and they responded that they intentionally used the same music for all battle tracks. And I was like, this is no excuse. If data miners found music in the files, why didn't you just use the original music? Basically the moral of this story Nintendo is really running out of ideas for Tor and the game is dying. And we all know it thanks to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass and us Mario Kart Tours really don't appreciate that. So there we have it. Those are 10 more things that everybody hates in Mario Kart Tour. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya.